Hi there, welcome to Effortless Math Channel. In this video, what I want to do is show you how to solve for missing angles in a right triangle. You may have just watched the video on how to solve for missing sides in a right triangle. This video will be a bit similar. We'll be applying the primary trig ratios that relate the side lengths and angles in a right triangle, but this time we're going to solve for unknown angles. So, all right, so let's get started. So I want to look at a quick example here where I'm being asked to find A if the tan of A is equal to 0 0.75. So this is a very simple trigonometric equation where I have some unknown angle. The tan of that angle is equal to 0 0.75. And remember that tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. So if I take the opposite and adjacent of some right triangle and I divide them by each other, I get 0.75. That's what this little equation says. Now, as it turns out, I can solve for the value of A by using an operation called the tan inverse. Now, you can find that on your calculator by using the second function or the shift key and locating the tan to the power of negative one key. That's called tan inverse. And you'll see that there's actually an inverse key for all three of the primary trig ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, if I take the tan inverse of both sides of this equation, what you'll see is the tan inverse and the tan will cancel each other out and we'll be left with the value of angle A being equal to the tan inverse of the right side. So if I do that on my calculator, if I take the tan inverse of 0 0.75, you're gonna see that what you end up with is 36.86 degrees. Now this is gonna be an important scale that we're gonna apply throughout this lesson, so I wanted to just give you a quick overview before we get started. Just a quick recap in case you are new to the primary trigonometric ratios. We have three ratios that relate the side lengths to the angles in a right triangle. We have sine, cosine, and tangent, and there's a memory aid, SOCATOA, which will tell us each side length that pertains to either sine, cos, or tan. So sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse, which is where SO comes from. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is where CA comes from. And tangent is the opposite over the adjacent, which is where TOA comes from. And you'll recall the opposite side length is always the one across from the given angle. The hypotenuse is of course always across from the right angle and the adjacent side is always gonna be next to whatever angle you're looking at. And we tend to work with degree mode on our calculator unless we're exploring radian measure. So let's combine these two ideas of taking inverse operations and using the trig ratios to solve for some angles. Looking at this example, we're being asked to use the appropriate trig ratio to solve for the unknown angle provided. Now, if you solved a triangle problem for an unknown side length, this triangle problem will look a little bit different. Instead of our unknown being a side length, it's actually an angle. But we can approach this problem in a similar way. We can look at this unknown angle and we can say, okay, well, I have a side length that is opposite to my angle. So I'll, I'll label that as O for opposite. And I also have a side length next to or adjacent to my unknown angle. So I'll call that the adjacent side. Now, thinking back to our memory aid, so katoa, I'm looking for a trig ratio that relates the opposite and the adjacent side. So that's tan, opposite and adjacent. So if I set up my trig ratio, I have the opposite side, which is 3.3. I'm dividing that by the adjacent side, which is 2.2. And I have this new ratio, tan of theta equals 3.3 over 2.2. Now you'll recall that in order to solve for the value of an unknown angle, I can apply the inverse operation for the trig ratio that we're using. So in this case, we're using tan. So if I take the tan inverse of both sides of my equation, I'll be able to solve for the value of that unknown angle. So doing that results in theta equals the tan inverse of 3.3 over 2.2. Now, most calculators will let you input this line exactly as you see it. You can just push the second function button, push tan inverse and open a set of brackets and put that fraction. If you're having trouble matching the answer that I'm gonna reach, you might want to try taking 3.3 divided by 2.2 and taking the tan inverse of that result. Either way, inputting that into your calculator will result in an angle of 56.30 degrees. I've just kept two decimal places there. So that's an example of how to apply the tan ratio to solve for an unknown angle. Let's take a look at another example. So looking at this triangle, I'm going to mark this one up in a similar way. I'm given this unknown theta angle and you can see I don't have the opposite side length, so I'm not interested in that side at all. I do have the hypotenuse, which is an interesting side across from the right angle, so I'll label that as H. And looking at this angle, I know that the side length of 12 is the adjacent side. That's the side next to my unknown angle. So I wanna find a trig ratio 
that's going to relate the adjacent to the hypotenuse. Going back to my memory aid, I'm looking for either so, ka, or toa that relates a and h. So that's going to be ka, which is the cosine ratio, the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. So I can set up my cosine ratio by saying the cosine of theta is going to be equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. In this case, that's going to be the cosine of theta is equal to 12 over 13. Now we can apply the cosine inverse operation here, not the tan inverse because we're working with cosine. And taking the cosine inverse of both sides, the cos and cos inverse will cancel, leading me to have just theta on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, I have the cos inverse of 12 over 13. Again, inputting that into your calculator using whichever method works for your particular calculator will result in an angle of 22.62 degrees. So we've successfully applied the cosine ratio to solve for this unknown angle. All right, so just to recap, in this video what we did is we looked at how to apply the primary trigonometric ratios to solve for missing angles in a right triangle. We used a similar process to what we would use to solve for unknown side lengths. However, we introduced the inverse operations for our primary trigonometric ratios to help with that. Thanks for watching Effortless Math Channel.